Hello everyone, just coming on here real quick just to have a little chit chat. <laughs> I know it has been a while since we've had one of these motivational type conversations and I am in my car, I'm on the way to Walgreens and maybe CVS, although this is not a couponing video, but sometimes I notice when I'm in the car that I have these ideas of things that I just want to share with you guys. So I am going to start with letting you all know that, you know what? God is just so good and I have to give him all the praise and glory because on last week, I did something that I had not done since I started my cancer treatments. So before I started my, um, well, I, I had started the cancer treatments, but after I had my diagnosis of cancer, I was doing a lot of things in the church, okay? So one of the things that I had been doing was praise and worship. But as my health began to decline, you know, of course I was not able to do any of those things so after I went through that process one by one I began to you know get back into doing things now I can honestly tell you the truth that at first after I finished my treatments when I came back to church you know and I you know it, I sat out for like six months and I did absolutely nothing because it was almost like I was operating in fear I was like, you know what, I, I'm, I'm too afraid to do anything and to volunteer or to, you know, like add things to my schedule because I just want to make sure that I don't have to go through that again. But I do realize and I understand that God has given us gifts and talents for a reason. He wants us to use those gifts and those talents for the kingdom and it may not be singing for you it may not be playing an instrument but it could be you have the gift and talent of being a very organized person so you could be a good usher or you could be a great uh event planner or something like that for the church you may have gifts and skills in the area of media arts so you know you can work with the media program you may have gifts and talents in the gift of teaching you could teach your sunday school class or a you know a leadership class some type of christian development class you know at your church but the bible says that whatever your hands find to do do it and I have been sitting back like not doing anything and I remember after being there for like six months just sitting there doing nothing you know the pastor and his wife they um you know they met with me and they were like well you know we know that you went through a lot but you know we're you know if you're ready you know it's time for you to get back to work you know sometimes people get knocked down off the horse but you don't stay there you know and for me that was so encouraging because I had gotten knocked down and I was just staying there instead of trying to rebuild and just trusting God that he would give me the strength. Now, not being crazy, not doing everything, you know, because I understand my limits, but it, I should not have just been sitting there doing nothing. And so gradually I began to, you know, get back on auxiliaries and things like that. So I started with Sunday school. I'm, you know, I'm the, what, what they call superintendent of the Sunday school. So I started with that and then I got back on the choir. And recently the praise and worship leader has been asking me about getting back on praise and worship. Now y'all, I'm going to tell you now. The girls at my church, they can sing, okay? Them girls can sing, and, and the guys too. And they kept asking me, they were like, when are you gonna do it? You know, and, and honestly, I don't feel that my voice is all that good, but when I take the focus off of me, what I have to understand that it's not about me, but it's about God. And I can't get up there thinking about what I can do. Now, no, nobody wants to go up there singing all out of tune and that type of stuff. But, you know, God did bless me with a voice that I sound decent. And if he wants, to, wants me to use it for his glory, then who am I to tell God no? So, you know, the young lady, she had asked me several times. And I honestly was trying to wait till the summer had come, you know, when school is over. But y'all, let me tell y'all what happened Mother's Day weekend, okay? So I went to church Mother's Day weekend. I had to lead a song for the choir that day. And so when I went upstairs, the praise, our, our uh, minister of music, he was like, you know, why you don't get back on praise and worship? What? Now he didn't know the other young lady had already asked me. 
So I just laughed. I was like, well, maybe I'll think I'll think about it. Now that was that was the one thing. Now then, how about I had on yellow and white that Sunday for Mother's Day? Now our praise and worship, they don't have uniforms, but they just wear certain colors. How about their colors for that day was like yellow, yellow and white. I was like, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? So then after church, when I got home, my youngest daughter, the eight year old, she was like, mommy, why you don't do praise and worship no more? Why you don't get up on the stage no more? I was like, Lord, okay. So I told the guy, I said, you know what? Yeah, I'll do it. So we were supposed to start in June. Well, last Wednesday, he asked me, he was like, oh no, well, can you start, can, can you practice with us Wednesday? And then you're going to start singing, which was last Sunday, um, Memorial weekend. So what's that? Um, May 27th. So you know what guys? So I, I said, Lord, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I wasn't sure about all the notes and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I am a perfectionist, you know, I want things to be done right. So, but when I got up there today, y'all, I took the focus off of me because I was like, Lord, before, before church even started, they were, you know, practicing the music and I just sat there and I sat in my seat and I remembered, I said, God, I, this is the first time I have seen praise and worship since you healed me of cancer. Since I went through all those treatments, God, I could have been dead. But you allow me to still be here and to use my voice to give glory and honor unto you. And one of the songs that we we were singing to, on, on Sunday was, God, you are great. You do miracles so great. I am a living testimony, y'all. Because many of you, if you haven't watched my story, I was on my deathbed. The doctors gave me six months to live and I was dying. But God brought me back from that. So I do know God as a miracle worker. And it was such an honor and a privilege to get up there today and not to get before people because I'm not that type of person. I'm really a behind the scenes person. Even making YouTube videos is out of my comfort zone. But this isn't about me. I do these videos to help other people. This is the main reason why I have my channel. Yeah, I do things with coupon and I learn that. But the main reason why I have my channel is to encourage people in this life. We all gonna go through the storms of life. But you need to see that there's somebody that have gone through something, but God brought them out. And if he did it for me, he gonna do it for you. God is amazing. And so I, I went up there today and let me tell you something. My girls were so I saw my girls worshiping God like nobody's business. My oldest daughter that's in the house with me, the 14 year old, she went up to the altar where her hands lifted. Now, you know, of course she was watching me because, you know, she was making sure that mommy hit all the right notes and things like that, you know. But I mean, just to see my children worshiping God. And at the end of church today, my little girl, she came up to me. Now I'm in the parking lot of Walgreens on my hit park. My little girl, she came up to me. She said, Mommy, she said, Mommy, I'm so glad you back on the um, praise and worship. She said, I'm so glad you back to doing praise and worship. She said, Mommy, I'm so proud of you. And will you have to understand, y'all, it's not about us. Because let me tell you something. Had it been my plan, my plan would be just to sit in the audience and hey, praise God, you know, from the from the audience, you know, and participate. Not necessarily to be on the front helping people to enter into the presence of God, but my girls are watching me and I am being a role model to them that when you go to church, your job is not just to sit there and take up space. When you go to church... You're supposed to do something. You're supposed to be working. Now, some people say, oh, well, I don't go to church because, you know, this and that and the third happened to me at church. I get that. But you know what? It's a new start. It's, it's a new, you know, it, we six. We got about six months left in the year 2018. Don't worry about other people at the church, what people might have done. Remember, when you go to church, you're not going for other people. You are going for God. God has something for you there. And you may say, oh, well, I don't have to go to church to get it. Yeah, but there are some things that the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. 
And it is good for you to come together with other believers and to worship God and to praise God and to have a good time. You know, and some, you know, so that's why I'm posting this video on a Saturday so you can get your mindset right. So you can go ahead and get the kids' hair done, put it in one ponytail, because I'm going to tell you, I'm the one ponytail queen. Y'all come in, I'll spray it with some water, gel that thing up, one ponytail, okay? Get the kids' dresses out or just or some whatever you have, a shirt, top, whatever, come as you are. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, do your hair, whatever. If you got to slap that thing back in a ponytail, go get you a wig, put it on, do do whatever. And if you say, oh, I ain't got nothing to wear, go to Goodwill, go to the thrift shop, go get you something, okay? Wash it, make it real clean, and you go on out there. Because you're not going out there for other people. Remember, you going to hear from God and to worship God and to honor God. If you put it in that perspective, then you ain't got to worry about well, who looking at you and what they got. Bunk them people. Like my dad, bunk them. Bunk them people. You're not going there for to be a people pleaser. You're going to worship God. Okay? You going there to please God. You going there so God can tell you what to do to keep your life straight and keep your life in order. That's why. That's the only reason why. So, y'all, I just wanted to come on here and just encourage you and just give you my testimony. Like I said, it's not about me because if it was about me, I'd be sitting in my seat. But God is calling me to something different. He said, I want you to use your members, use your body, use your gift, use your talents for my kingdom. Okay? Because if left up to me, my body would be in my bed sleeping. Okay, but when I think about that, I have to understand that the grace of God kept me so my body was not in a grave sleeping. So that's why when I think of the goodness of, of all he has done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. He spared my life. And so now my life's work is to live my life so that it brings glory and honor to God. And I hope that I have encouraged you today on this video and I will see you at the next upload.